Hi guys, welcome back. Um, <clears throat> okay, so I've decided that I'm going to be talking for the rest of the parts. The last video that I did, I got a bit of stick for because it was a little bit... Um, there was a lot of copying and pasting without any explanation or anything, so I apologise for that. Um, and from here on out, you're going to have to listen to my voice. I apologise, but I think it's the best thing to do. To be able to explain everything for you um a lot of the video <clears throat> a lot of the code that i copied and pasted yesterday was code that i got from uh, the microsoft documentation um so yeah um i wouldn't have been able to do that on my own that was just what i'd found um so anyway let's get on with it today we're going to be doing the tab headers going to design um, the the look of the tabs um, so to st st actually let's start by loading it up and seeing what we're working with <clears throat> ah um, so at the moment it's obviously we can't do anything we can't click any buttons we can't do anything um, so let's fix that it's a very simple fix um, so let's scroll down to where you've in the stack panel where it says Windows Chrome dot is hit is hit test visible in Chrome. Copy that and then scroll right down to our tab control, paste that into there, and then come up to here um, to this grid which contains our buttons, um, and then type panel dot z index and then we'll just set this to one zero four uh, z one zero two four uh just a random number that's quite high so it's going to be above, above everything else uh, and let's run it again let's just make sure that worked so as you can see now we can actually interact with our buttons um so let's move straight on to the tab header um, so first thing we want to do is come down to our tab item um, actually let's create a folder first so let's add folder we'll call it um, templates right click add new item <clears throat> left hand side click WPF and choose resource dictionary We've already created one in the past, but we'll make a new one. Um, and then we'll just call this data templates. <clears throat> Before we can use it though, we'll need to come over to app.xaml um, and we'll add it to the top. So in between the merge dictionaries, let's just add a dictionary and source re, um, tem templates and then da data template dot xaml like that save it project uh, sorry uh, build and then build solution once that's done we should be able to now use that in our data templates <coughs> sorry um, so let's create a data template let's give it a key X key and we'll call this uh, tab header template nice and simple copy that and then inside this we'll add a grid grid column definition column 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 top width will be 18 and then the bottom one 18 let's add an image which is going to be our favicon second one will be text block and third one will be be a button. The button 
for now we'll have a background of transparent a border of transparent border thickness of zero uh, horizontal alignment center vertical alignment center width 16 height 16 uh, image will be um, width 16 <clears throat> height 16 horizontal alignment center vertical alignment center text block in fact let's just add a grid dot column to this one uh, and we'll put that as two zero one two <clears throat> grid oops uh, grid dot column one vertical alignment center and horizontal alignment left we'll set the font size font size to 14 and that should be good to go Um, actually let's let's change the size of this so the height will set to 32 and the width will set to 200 um, let's go into our tab um, sorry our main window and we will add the header template to that let's just build that we'll just at the moment we'll add um, text uh, we'll just put new document like that So that's how it's set and our icon will go there and our close button will go there let's just we've got that so let's add the content and we'll just put across just to see if that works <clears throat> i mean that's not going to stay there but we can see where the button is okay um let's run it and see what that looks like So that's the size that it's going to be. Um, let's get rid of that uh, padding that <clears throat> is on our button. There you go. Okay. So we've got our um, focused tab. Let's go back into our window and copy and paste. Like that. So now if we come over to our document outline if you haven't got it <clears throat> um, showing you can just come into this view and then we'll scroll down to uh, document outline where are you where are you 
I can't see it for looking. <laughs> it's in here somewhere. I'm sure you'll find it. I won't spend too much time looking for it, but it is it is in here somewhere. Um, I've probably gone over it a thousand times. Wow. That is... Oh, there you go. Document outline. <clears throat> if you can't find it in there, you can just type it in the top. So, if we open our do document outline and we go to tab item, right click it, edit, edit copy, and we'll just apply to all, application, and then hit OK. That's going to open it up in our app. <clears throat> Let's change that to th three. Let's build it, make sure everything's working okay. Okay, everything seems to be okay. So now we can um, we can mess about with the values of these. So um, mouse over border. We'll just add this light to a light grey or a dark grey. Um, background. We'll set this to black for now. Um, Selected border, maybe something like that. Like these can all be changed it's just to see if it's working okay. Uh, foreground, we'll set that to white. Um, so then we've got uh, static, this is for the um, the one that's not focused so we'll just set that to black again in fact we'll set that to black and then we'll set this one to like a lighter color just so we can distinguish between padding I'll come back to that and we'll just save it and then open our main window and as you can see now in fact what colour is this? what colour is the main window? let's have a look so I'm going to copy that and I'm going to set that to the colour of this There we go. So it looks like it's so it looks like it's all in one, um, and then the border. Um, border. I'll set that to black. Like that. Then let's set that. Let's say it's black. In fact, let's say it's the same color as that. Like so. Um, if we come down into our main border, I want to give it a corner radius 0, 3, 3, 0. Did I do that the wrong side? Yeah, I did. Um, <clears throat> actually, let's just do. Maybe like that. 
so it's just got that top corner let's give it a run see what that looks like it's already looking so much better um, that's a horrible color that's there though so let's change that and that is done here so maybe something like <clears throat> maybe something like that that's much better Yeah, that looks so much better. Maybe I will add a border around it just so it separates it from the back. Um, maybe just something like that. Yeah, so it's just got a tiny colour, so you can actually see that it's it's um, that it's not a part of this. That's quite nice, quite like that. It's to say that it's that I've not really added much to it yet. Um, so if we go back to our main page, I think I'm gonna make the this a little bit bigger. So actually, let's go to our data template. I'm going to change this to 25. Let's see if that does much. So we'll have our icon there. Yeah, that looks good. I like it. Right, so that's that for this part. Um, in the next part, we're going to actually program it. We're going to add uh, some observable uh, collections for the tabs and the content. Uh, thanks for watching. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Um, also, please leave a comment in, in a comment if you've got any questions, and please subscribe to the channel if you like to. <laughs> um, I'll see you soon, guys. Thanks for watching.